Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me in another of my wonderful interviews. And as you can see, I'm not in the studio. I am out on location. In fact, I am the guest of Dr. Alex Ling, who is my guest today. Hello, Alex. Hello. It's very nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. And thank you for uh, allowing us into your home to, Privilege. Yes. to talk about your stuff. Now, let me be honest. Yeah. I, I hadn't heard of you. Um, Pam Gregory did an interview with you. The world suddenly now knows you, um, and you're doing some very important and um, interesting, fascinating work. Mm. Um, and also, there's an event that everybody should know about and, and not be at all fearful. That's right. Um, I'm probably most known for my research with uh, structured water, and uh, that's that's something I've researched uh, through the last 14 years and. Uh, I was uh, researching especially frankincense, myrrh and gold and how to connect that to structured water. Now structured water is um, living water as we know it when it comes out of a spring. Uh, but unfortunately until, uh, when it comes through our piping system it loses that kind of living aspect and it's very much compromised by all the chemicals they use to, uh, uh, to treat water. Uh, because it's very often recycled. In fact, it's usually five times recycled uh, over and over when we, when we uh, use it for our drinking water or tap water. Um, and people are very worried. I mean, I know running the channel, people are very worried about what comes out of the tap yeah. water because it's treated rather than um, sort of extracted fresh. Yes, that's right. I mean, people are starting to use filters and all sorts of different ways to purify the water again you can also use for example distilled water um, but then you have to bring the life force back into it so you're using some celtic salt to just structure it again um, so just to enrich it with the minerals which basically are not in there anymore when you have distilled water so that's the possibility um, and is that i mean is that good uh, because yes, we do yeah. i mean we filter and then we put uh, Celtic sea salt in, yes. Julia and I. Oh, definitely um, good, yes. And, uh, and I guess it depends on your filter and how, yeah. how um, effective that is. Yes. But people do have all sorts of ideas, don't they? They have all osmosis machines yes. and uh, yeah. the, um, the one distillery machines. Yes, water imploders. I mean, there are all sorts of different ways to purify your water. Um, some of them are really, really good, but be always careful because you don't have to spend like a huge amount to right. make it drinkable. So uh, the best way, if you have just a possibility to go to a nearby spring and just fill up some glass bottles, don't, please don't use plastic bottles um, because the plastic, again, the chemicals are leaking into the water. Water is um, a very sensitive and quite intelligent uh, 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 Su not supplement, sorry. Substance. It's uh, a substance, um, so it's, um, it and has consciousness, actually. And this is something that, I mean, you know, I'm on, on this journey, mm. waking up and learning all of this stuff, and I'm sure many, many others are doing exactly the yeah. same. And the idea that, that water, I mean, this is quite new to, yeah. I mean, not, obviously not new to you, because you've been doing it for a long time, but new to so many people, that mm. water can have that consciousness yes. and is affected by... Um, well, that is it. The Japanese, Mr. Doctor, Doctor Emoto. Emoto, uh, that's his yes. name. Yes. So his work is is quite uh, phenomenal and was very very important and still is. Uh, so he was imprinting or co communicating with water on this specific way to use words, um, and th the water would uh, memorize the frequencies of those words. So every word we we, we speaking has a certain frequency and has a certain vibration. And uh, if you put good intention, meaning you're very positive, uh, positive thoughts into your water, it will have a much nicer structure uh, than water which has been treated with bad intention. Yes. So, and, and that sounds a little bit woo-woo, but uh, there are so many different... But these days, things that are woo-woo, <laughs> I mean, we're all beginning to accept all of this and, and yes. um, understand it. Do you have to say it out loud when you're talking no. to them? No, you can, you can think it or right. you just write a little note and just put it underneath the bottle or the glass of your water 
And uh, then what you can do as an experiment, and everybody can do this, uh, you can use a little petri dish um, and put a little bit of that water uh, into the petri dish and freeze it, semi-freeze it, and then take a photograph of, with, your, with your camera and just uh, zoom it up and you can see the ice crystals forming really, really beautiful. Yes. So, and, and that's their stunning, stunning uh, photograph, uh, photographs uh, being taken by Dr. Emoto and makes it really, really clear how really our thoughts have an impact on water. And of course we are something like 99% water. Yes, exactly, on a cellular level, absolutely. A, a, and so water clearly has huge importance, yes. but like so many things, we take those things like food and water and, and daylight, we, we take them for granted. Yeah. Yes. And yet they're also vital to us. Absolutely. Even taking a shower in the morning, uh, this is our biggest or organ is the skin, right? And uh, so it is quite important that we are looking after, after the water which we're consuming, which we're using for washing, for cooking. These kind of things are important. Yes, absolutely. And, and it, it, so tell me, so tell me a, a little bit more about how you discovered um, the importance of water and, and, mm. and what we can do. Because I know that um, we've had a chap called Phil who's, who did some amazing stuff by using vibration from music and light yeah. to increase strength. Yeah. And he was, he, he, we, he was on the show and he demonstrated these things. We were trying these sort of push me, pull you <laughs> type things. And, and then he would say, right, I'm just gonna squirt this area. And we stood in the area yeah. and suddenly amazing huge amount of strength so there's so much beneficial but how did you get into it oh, well that's a very good question i have to go back uh, quite a bit but um i was um of course i'm also working in functional medicine and uh, so through this process i always was looking into some new ways how i can treat uh, my my clients and um, too many supplements are also not very good for us because um, our body is treating them partially as toxins if you are overloaded anyway. Right. So the best thing is first to have a detox and then start from scratch. So, but I, as I used uh, frankincense and myrrh in my treatment for quite some time, and I've seen the amazing benefits it has, I wondered how I can connect the two together, the structured water and the, um, the frankincense, myrrh and gold. Um, so, because in in uh, alchemy, for example, uh, myrrh is representing earth and frankincense is representing air. So, and the gold is a bridging tool. So there are, there are lots and lots of ancient texts which actually talk about the importance of using frankincense, myrrh and gold, um, not just uh, as a purification in their temples, but also for internal use. Right. And, uh, and the, from there, I, I was very curious and I studied it. And then I just needed to find a way how to connect the, the three elements together. So um, all I needed to find a way is, is to make it water soluble, which I did just uh, um, a couple of years ago when we had a big breakthrough. And uh, sorry, you said make water soluble. Soluble? No, sorry. Um, frankincense and myrrh. Right. Because right. I was thinking Apologies. water is <laughs> relatively <laughs> soluble. Yes. Um, so yes. So I found a way how to make frankincense and myrrh water soluble right. because usually it doesn't connect you can dissolve frankincense to a certain level so is that like oil in water that yes. it won't quite exactly yeah okay. so and uh, also i wanted to uh, have a, a, a very high bioavailability when you take the supplement uh, what does that mean Bio um, it means that it gets absorbed in oh, right. yes even better yeah so and uh, and then I found a way how to connect the uh, the resins which are oil based and the water together using monoatomic gold as a bridging tool uh, so when this uh, it sounds simple but it was actually quite no, I'm sure, I'm sure quite it's some, not easy some at all doing. <laughs> but uh, then uh, we had the um, the result and then I started using it uh, for the first time we had uh, 200 uh, just about 200 people who were testing it and um, and we had quite, uh, it was quite a surprise because it was not just on a physical le level very beneficial, but also on, um, on the spiritual level. Right. So people were talking about how relaxed they feel and uh, they had incredible dreams and they would process 
certain things which uh, would worry them for years and years, you know, um, some kind of uh, something which would uh, hold them back to go forward. Um, and also on the uh, unconscious, subconscious, uh, sorry, unconscious, subconscious and conscious level, it would build a bridge which then would reinstate um, our ability for self-healing. And that was something which I was actually trying to achieve with that. Uh, so that we can use one supplement who would really enhance these kind of properties in us. Right. There's, I mean, that's an absolutely fascinating journey. Firstly, let me ask you, I mean, gold, frankincense and myrrh, uh, 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 now I'm going to show my ignor ignorant nature here. I mean, you know, the, the little Bible story of Jesus and the manger yes. who was given frankincense yeah. and gold and myrrh. Um, <laughs> yeah. it, it, they're obviously beneficial to you physically. Yes, absolutely. You and can't uh, go into a chemist yeah. and say, oh, could I have some gold and some frankincense? I'm just going to make up my own potion. <laughs> Sadly not. <laughs> Maybe in the future. Maybe in the but future. <laughs> but they um, do have a real benefit, do they? Absolutely, yes. Frankincense is, a, is a, a enormous uh, anti-inflammatory. So many right. people who, uh, for example, have arthritis or rheumatoid arthritis really benefit from it. Um, and of course, myrrh, as of late, um, even some of the cancer research has been paying attention to myrrh because uh, myrrh is toxic to cancer. Oh, wow. So, and uh, there's a real benefit. Uh, so together, it really, um, if, especially for cancer treatment, uh, can be uh, uh, very beneficial because it, it takes, uh, it reduces the uh, inflammation. And uh, on the other side, it targets the cancer as well. So we can't make any statements with the product we have. We're not allowed to do that. But no. this is what frankincense and myrrh can do for and you. And are they rare? substances no no i don't not, know why really. i i always imagined they were rare because they were given to you know in, in the biblical story <laughs> yes. they were given you think oh they must yes. be incredible and gold of course is quite valuable. of course yes uh, it is monoatomic gold which is a slightly different form of gold it's a mineral which right. uh, originates in the sea in the oceans so but um uh, in terms of uh, availability um, so it is we sourcing our frankincense and myrrh from very sustainable uh, sources, so we don't like to buy it from um, backgrounds where we know that it's damaging yes. the environment. So we have uh, someone who is in Oman, and he is purchasing the best and purest um, frankincense and myrrh fast. Fantastic! So. And so you've 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 amalgamated all this together, and you've mm -hmm. come up with um, water that you s I think you sell it in your shop in Glastonbury. Yes, that's right. Yeah, uh, which is fantastic. So if you happen to be in the area, do nip in and get <laughs> some. Um, so it, it helps you self-heal. Now, I'm yeah. very intrigued on the spiritual at the moment because this is an area that I understand least. Mm -hmm. um, having spent 60 years on this planet, if it is a planet and all these sort of questions, please don't <laughs> throw that at me at the moment. Uh, but, you know, it, we've been in a very um, material 3D world. Yeah. But at the moment, there's so much activity yeah. on the spiritual side. And you cannot help but wherever you look, there are people talking about it. And I feel that the, the work that I'm doing, um, I'm slowly coming to realise that there might be some, some connection elsewhere. Yes. And, and people keep telling me that and I'm trying to, you know, do all that. And then, so with your water, am I correct in thinking, because I was watching one or two of your interviews recently, so I had some vague idea of what we were going <laughs> to talk about, that it, it affects and opens or help open the pineal gland. That's right. And yes. the connection to, you know, whatever we call it, the universe, higher self, etc. Exactly. So it, it, it doesn't matter how people describe it. Some people call it God or the void or the universe, um, whatever you feel comfortable with. But it does seem to connect us to a certain source of where perhaps we originated from. Right. And that has also to do with water, because water is originally from the universe. So there's a lot of recent research which points towards it. And also our ancestors, I mean, in ancient times, we're talking 10,000 years ago, Sumerian, Babylonian, you know, so Egyptians, uh, they all would um, describe the water as the cosmic ocean. So and oh, right. the reason for that is that they already knew how important the connection is between water and the cosmos. Um, not just because of the alignments of uh, all sorts of different planets, 
uh, in connection with their megalithic sites, and that's something which I studied quite intensely um, in connection with water, because most of the megalithic sites, the pyramids, for example, have all a source of water, and that is to enhance the energies. Yes. Now, talking of megalithic sites, um, and I know that you've been around all, all, I mean, what an amazing life you've had. You've <laughs> gone to so many interesting, fascinating places, yeah. and you just think, wow, that is just uh, uh, incredible. I was thinking, of course, in, in Britain, we have Stonehenge, which everybody knows about. Yeah. Um, and those stones must hold a huge amount of resonance and importance yeah. for um, probably man today that we don't know about, I'm guessing, yes. but certainly for, for ancient man. Um, I, I'm not aware of the geography of that site terribly very well. I mean, I know where it is and I've been it, but in terms of water, is there water underneath? Is there water in that site? You're the second person over the last 24 hours who's asking me that question. Um, yes, all, all megalithic sites have some form of water flowing underneath. Even so, if there's no record as such, we have water tables which are quite deep right. down. And, uh, and many of the uh, even smaller stone circles have some form of the spring or a well just really close by. So there's always water. And so how does the water connect with the megalithic? Uh, um, because yes. I know there's a lot to do with vibration. That's right. So we have to look at granite just for, for short short kind of understanding how it works. So within granite you have um, rock crystal and rock crystal is something which is within a lot of different types, types of stones, uh, especially in, in, in granite. And if you home into the, if you zoom into the uh, rock crystals, you see tiniest, tiniest pockets um, which contain water, not water in form of drops, but vapor. Right. So, and if you would open them up, it would just evaporate. But this holds a record, Gosh. and that record goes back to the origin of everything. Wow. So, I, I, so in theory, these places like megalithic stone circles yeah. and, and these standing stones, if you could read them, you could you'd just understand so much, wouldn't you? Exactly. It's, it's like a giant tape recorder, effectively. It, Absolutely, and that was one of my work, my studies, which I have done. So where I have um, recorded, we used a certain frequency. It was quite difficult to find uh, the right frequency to excite the stone. That's what we call it in physics. Um, so we, uh, we had to go through quite a number of different frequencies and sounds. So cut a long story short, we found a sound which was incredibly connected. It was connected to the whale sound. Oh, right. And um, when we used the whale sound to play it into one of the stones, and the stones we used for that is uh, the um, Mary Maiden Stone Circle in Cornwall. Uh, it's in Penwith. It's a beautiful site. It's quite accessible. Everybody can go there. And uh, st stone number 16, which kind of uh, lines up with two other standing stones, uh, which are called the Pipers. Now, that's... A really interesting story as in as in the sound exactly so the pipers in the folklore would play the flute and the 19 maidens within the stone circle would dance to the flute um, now there is a reason for that and when we did our experiment we started to understand actually what it really means so we um, then when we played the sound to the stone which is about one meter in length um, it should have taken only 0 0.2 milliseconds to travel from one side of the stone to another. It didn't because it was delayed. So then we had a delay and the signal came through after 1.2 seconds and 2.9 seconds the sec second time, which is in physics impossible. Right. So are you saying that the stone held that signal and was intently listening before it let it go? Well, that's what I thought first of all, and then we kind of analyzed the sound its itself, uh, the one which we used, and the length of it, and not only that we had a delay, the stone actually delayed or, or elongated, sorry, the, uh, the sound. The original sound oh, was right. longer. So now we had two incredible... Um, things happening here which we couldn't explain from a, a logical mind. But 
I think we have to stop analyzing that with our logical mind and yes. we have to think in a different way. So if you see, for example, how many people would come to these kind of sites and would connect to the sites and do their work, um, these are all vibrations and frequencies. So, and of course the stone is resonating with it. And it's like a computer. It just kind of um, absorbs all that information because wow. of the water in it. So, and we just literally just tapped into maybe a the tiniest, tiniest fraction of one moment in all those years those stones have been existing. That is, I mean, that is incredible. As you were talking there and talking about stones, I've been recently learning about soil, and of course soil, topsoil, that we grow in is the result of stones breaking down over yeah. millions of years. So presumably in the soil, you've still got those t very yeah. tiny bits of va vapor, water vapor in yes, there. Yes, in, in terms of salts. In, oh, in terms of salt, right. Yeah. And of course, within all the, the topsoil, you have the little pockets of air yeah. and, and water, uh, water vapor or, yeah. or the, the water in air's vapor. Yeah. I'm not expressing myself terribly well, but you know what I mean. Um, which for plants growing, uh, which of course, you know, for animals and for us is absolutely vital. Yes. And the water that falls from the sky then, is that, is that, um, is, is that structured? As it hits the as it hits the ground, or does it change when it hits that that those elements of um, stone that's the, the soil stone that's that's been broken down over the years? Well, from the clouds, it would it would be structured as well. So this is just a natural form of how uh, the earth is absorbing the water. There's no interference, and it's a natural flow because it it goes through the element of the air, and it actually if you would follow the the drop, it would kind of create a vortex as well. Ah. So, and, and that's how it is structured, right. as well as coming from a spring. Right, because we've seen these devices that, that yeah. create a vortex with pyramids or exactly. various things on, and, and, that, yes. and that's, is that the vibration of it that's, that's helping? It's, it's more the movement. The movement. So it's like a, a two, um, a double helix, as I call it, um, and uh, this double helix is starting to um, to restructure the water. Uh, it's a natural process. If you go into rivers or uh, in the ocean, you see sometimes how this kind of vortices, vortices are being created naturally. Right. And this is constantly moving water and restructuring. So do you say, I mean, we know there's a whole load of political things and reasons why things are the way they are at the moment mm. in a very sort of negative place but do you think if we were to our water treatment for example because getting water to everybody particularly healthy good living water yeah. structure if if they were using big vortexes before they sent it to us would mm. that help i think you would definitely make an impact with that yes that would help to restructure the water uh, but yeah. going down the pipes in itself sort of deadens it, does it? Yes, that's, yeah. that's unfortunately. With the invention of cisterns, uh, which not came actually from the Romans, it was in existence way before that. Uh, we have records going back 10,000 years. Um, again, many of the areas of, of uh, Sumeria uh, would use these kind of cisterns. And there are even texts, and that's a kind of really interesting point, where they would forbid people to use uh, spring water and would order them to drink from the cistern. Knowing that it was less good for them. Exactly. Dear well, idea. There you yeah. <laughs> so there you are. So this, I mean, so a lot of what you, this is quite um, occulted knowledge that you're mm. discovering that people have known about or realized that actually, yeah, they need water, but don't let them go to the springs. Yes. Um, and so that's really interesting. Let's um, talk about this event that's happening yeah. um, and how that relates and what's going on. I don't know too much about it, but it's an eclipse. Yes, it's, it's an eclipse, solar eclipse, total eclipse, which is happening on the 8th of April uh, 2024. And uh, it's happening in Mexico. So it's quite an important event, um, which I have to explain that a little bit. We are in a solar maximum, which means uh, we have a lot of solar flares and this cycle is happening every 11 years. 
so the sun, sun is extremely active and throws out a lot of energy towards the Earth as well at times. It can affect, as we know, GPS systems and all these kind of things um, because it plays uh, with the electrons and the free electrons in the ionosphere. So in that moment when we have um, a solar eclipse, for example, uh, the same happens as well. So the free electrons, they're spacing out more than usual. And uh, for radio signals, for example, it's quite difficult uh, to sometimes in some areas to get a radio signal, in some areas a complete blackout. Um, so when you have three events coming together, which is the uh, new moon, the solar maximum and the solar eclipse, uh, there's quite a lot of energy happening on that specific day. Nothing bad is going to happen because uh, people are always saying, oh, you know, is, is this going to impact in a way that uh, we, we heard all sorts of yes, I bet. Uh, yes. weird and wonderful stories. But we see it more from a very positive side because now this is going to be sounding a little bit um, far out, but uh, I try to explain it as well as I can. Um, when this event is happening, the uh, electrons, as I just said, uh, they're spacing out and what we call the artificial matrix, that's where we live in, which is built from all the electricity, everything, all the Wi-Fi signals and everything we're using in our technology world. Um, this is the matrix we are living in. So in that moment of the totality, this matrix has, uh, is going to be reduced and the Earth matrix, which is the Earth's energy, which is actually kind of being smothered amongst all these kind of activities we have, um, is there's a chance for us as, hum as humans to reconnect to that pure energy in that moment. Oh, wow. Yes. So, and many, many people, uh, I've been speaking to so many over the last few weeks, um, coming from totally different backgrounds, different religions, different belief systems, we are all on the same page. Everybody totally agrees. So this solar eclipse, which will be well, observable in Mexico, yeah. but will it, it'll affect the whole world yes. because of the activity of the sun exactly. and all those things come together. Yeah. So we can all basically have a, that chance to reconnect. Yes, that's right. I, yeah. I, I was hoping that you were going to say that what will happen is all the 5G rubbish <laughs> will be knocked out well, um, or that people's <laughs> yeah. Wi-Fi yeah. will be switched off for a f period so yeah. that we don't get all that radio there signal. Is, there is a high possibility that might happen. Oh, well, I'm, <laughs> I, it would be not. Would it not be nice to be, out, be of, out of all of that stuff? Yeah. Yes. Uh, but what, so what should we do then when you say it's a chance for us to reconnect with the Earth? Do we go earthing, grounding? Well, many people do it in a different way. And right. there are no really guidelines, you know, who. And that's the other thing. You know, we have to stop thinking that we need someone to tell us what to do. Right. So in essence, really, everybody knows very much has has all the tools. We have all the tools right there in our body. And um, what we suggested and that's the only suggestion we give, we give in that uh, connection, is to use a sound, and that sound came, it's, it's called a primordial sound. And that sound has been just recently re um, recorded from the gravitational waves, and it's uh, a note, which is C4. Uh, it's, it's a flute, we use... A Are you able to sing it for us? <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it like the old sort of om uh, type thing? It's, 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 uh, it's not really the om, because the om is a different opening. Right. So uh, this one is going within us and is connecting us directly to Earth. And that's the whole reason for that. So we're using the hum. Hum. A hum sound, yes. And that sound is been used already for many people who are trying to heal themselves and quite successfully with that. Um, it has a lot of ancient records because of the bees uh, who are also hum in that specific oh, frequency. Right. Uh, we have the waves which are crashing on, on the beach. Cats purring? Pa cats purring. So it's all the kind of frequency, it's the same kind of frequency, just um, it's very difficult to pinpoint to say, okay, this is like, for example, two five six right. uh, hertz right yes because everybody who comes together has dif different harmonics yes but it doesn't matter even if you're not pitch perfect it so doesn't it's all matter. about the intention it's the intention but also we have our own tool to connect to it right so 
And if we do this in, in a group, and we have done it in the uh, uh, Glastonbury Town Hall, where I gave a talk and we had about 120, 30 people who hummed in the end of the talk, and it was phenomenal. It was incredible. Uh, it was such positivity and everybody was really, really connected and it was a very emotional event as well, but it gave that strength. Yes, I can imagine. Um, and I think this is what it's all about because we have been so divided over the last few years yes. that we need something which is connecting us again. Absolutely. And I truly believe something so simple, you don't have to learn anything about it, you just hum, it's easy. So. You know, we don't, we don't need teachers telling us no. all the time what we need or, or any big ego t pointing out, you know, exactly what we have to do and pay a huge amount of money for it. And this, this moment, is it um, uh, the whole day or for several days? Right. This specific one is uh, on the 8th is, for, is running for 4 minutes, 28.1 seconds. That's how long the, uh, the, the shadow, the, the, uh, the duration of the shadow is, is lasting in the totality. In, in Mexico. Uh, the, the, the place where it is in Mexico is also quite interesting because in ancient times, uh, Gobekli Tepe actually, in Turkey, was already pointing out to this specific event. And um, there's a pillar which is called uh, Pillar 43. Just have a look at it. Um, pillar 43. Yes. So where the phoenix, or whichever, some people say it's a phoenix, some people say it's a swan, uh, it doesn't matter in that respect, it's holding the sun. Mm. And uh, there's a lot of ancient texts which I've seen and many of the archaeologists sadly don't share all the information um, because if it doesn't fit into their timeline or, or the, the story, or the narrative, exactly, yeah. and then they're not going to give us that information. But yeah. Or they uh, won't get their funding or something <laughs> like that, probably. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Same old story, nothing yes, changes. Yes, absolutely. So that event was, has been talked about you know, many thousands of years ago, and when it came up, actually, I thought that the only possibility is a link here, and I just kind of researched it, and I thought, yes, that's the point. And um, so the zone, it's called the zone of silence, um, is this particular stretch of the desert and you couldn't make it up because it's, um, it has its own magnetic field. Wow. And uh, so any compass you put on the rocks or on the ground just keeps spinning. So That's amazing. That, that is absolutely incredible. So there's a huge energetic field. Some people talk from a portal. Uh, you know, there, there are a lot of conspiracies surrounding that area where people have had UFO experiences and all sorts. Um, however, there is a laboratory which is called the Biosphere Lab. And <clears throat> so um, this particular lab, uh, laboratory, is studying the plants in that specific zone because they are much, much larger and much more vibrant in, in all the colors oh, right. as in any other area. Yes. And it also affects, uh, it affects also the animals. Gosh. So it is really noticeable. Um, and so there is a mountain within this zone, um, which is uh, 1,440 meter high, uh, a number which um, is strangely coming up a lot in a lot of prophecies. So I, I'm not going into that kind of detail because, you know, we just have to see what happens. Sure. But um, it is an odd number. And so it's quite a hike and I'm going to meet um, Sasha Stone in, in the desert and then we're going to spend, uh, actually there are, uh, some people are going to join us um, from, uh, some of them are, are native, uh, native people who are joining us and so, so it's going to be quite an incredible event. And so in terms of the humming that people want to do, is there a time in GMT, Greenwich Mean Time? Yes, there is. And that was uh, seven, seven, 17? In the morning? No, in the, that's in the evening. In the evening, 7.17 yes. p.m. So we, we have a website uh, which is called um, thehum2024 
dot com, I think. Yes. <laughs> I'm hum. not very good to remember. Don't, don't worry. Things. Hum. Um, the hum. Yes. Oh, we'll, just hum. Yeah. hum. We'll, we'll put the link in the description. Yes. So, and, yeah. uh, and all the information is on there because we wanted uh, to make it freely accessible to everybody. So we're going to have a, um, a table of times for all the different time zones and countries up there. We have also uh, some, form, uh, some platforms where people actually can connect to each other and organize their own events. Um, some of the events um, are already organized by some of my friends. Uh, most of them are, are totally free. Some charge a little bit for the accommodation and these kind of things, but it's completely it's completely up to everybody. You yes. can do this in your own home or just with your friends or uh, meet up with a group of people. It doesn't really matter so long you just hum. And that's the 8th of April. We're recording, well, this will go out on the 1st of April, uh, April Fool's Day of all days, <laughs> but so you've got seven days if you're watching this as yeah. it's been broadcast. But it's the eighth of April yes. at seven seventeen p.m. GMT. Um, so, so that I mean that's something everybody can get, and it's great to have these events that people can connect and everybody Absolutely. gets. You know, even if yes. they even if they're driving down the motorway and they they yes. oh hang on I'll, I'll just going to be you're part yeah. of this great big global yes. thing, which yes. is fantastic. So this event is going to run. Uh, this is like the entrance to it, um, or the beginning, the start. So we are planning to have this on an ongoing basis for the next one and a half, almost two years, um, just so that we motivate people to really also go out in nature mm. and just c reconnect with this planet. This is a beautiful, beautiful planet. Don't let your kids sit all the time behind the devices. I, do, I say this, I say this in the show, you know, we do, <laughs> we do push this message, but yeah. it's great hearing somebody else say it. Yeah, it's um, so important. I wanted to ask you a question, um, going back to the structured water. Uh, Julia and I, um, we drink a lot of raw milk now. Mm. Does raw milk have structured water in it naturally? Yes, it has. Yeah, because it's come straight from the cow yeah. and it's not exactly. piped or anything. It's not exactly. It's not been tempered with. Uh, and presumably yeah. fruit from the trees. Absolutely, and, and, totally and, structured. Yeah. Yes. So the more of again getting back to nature. Yeah. Yes. The more that we do that and we eat fresh. Yeah. And local, presumably. Yes, absolutely. And uh, just have, for example, if you have a little bit of lemon, uh, melon in the morning, um, it, it it structures your 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 body. In, in an amazing way so that any other water you're going to consume afterwards, you already have hydrated your body uh, on, on a quite quite good level. Wow, on such as just on a small piece just of a, milk? Just, well, you have to eat like a, a little kind of, you know, quarter yeah. of it or yeah, something. Yeah. No, you know? no, yeah. But uh, it's so important to eat fresh fruit, totally yes. important. Uh, some people, for example, also use uh, lemon um, in, in some water in the morning, either warm water or cold water. And, uh, and that helps also the, the body to, uh, to, to be hydrated straight away. So it, it does help. Fantastic. So before we wrap up, we must let people know about A, where they can find you. B, can they buy your water online or is it only available in, in the shop? Uh, right. Okay. We have a website. Um, unfortunately, at the moment, we are completely sold out. So right. we, we are restocking. But yes, you can order it. And uh, the shop is called Aquan. Um, that's uh, A Q U A N. And the link uh, in the description. Yes, the website is uh, Aquan uh, dot uk. So yes, and you can order it there. So yes. in, in just a few days, we will be. We get the same problem. I get with the supplier of raw milk yeah. where I go. And they say, oh, yes, there's so, so much interest at the moment. Yeah. You know, oh, and in that case, we've just got to wait for the cow, <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which is great. You know, it's not like you're waiting for people, but yes. you're just waiting for the cows. To, yes. To the, the most important for us is we are not mass producing. Right. So we are a small company and we're producing it in Cornwall. And uh, it's, it's very important to us that we are not um, going down the mass production. Yes. Uh, so we want to maintain the quality of our products and your integrity. Exactly. As well. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Which, that's much more important. And, and we get, I get a lot of that. They say, "Oh, you're just getting people on the show to sell their yeah. product and what yeah. have you." Um, wow. And it does depend what the product is, because if it's really helpful, then yeah. we, we'd like to know about it, because we all we all want that. But on a daily daily basis, for most people, we can 
heal ourselves much better by yeah. drinking structured water. Yes. That we can, if we get access to a spring, which isn't so easy these days. It's not easy, but just uh, there is some great glass bottled water around as well uh, there's for example um, yeah depending on where, where you are yes but there are some good sources um, it's just when you go into the supermarket and you buy it from uh, uh, out of a plastic bottle um, also it's how they store it and yes. that's again is very important because you know water has memory so if it is stored next to some uh, bleach or some chemicals, then it will take on that program. Yes. So and that's not very good for us. I, I mean, that's so interesting. We um, interviewed a lady, um, and I can't remember her name, I'm just looking at towards Julia, um, and she was talking about food in the factories and, and where people are packing or preparing food in the factory, they have no love for yeah. the, the food. Absolutely. They have yeah. no, the, nothing is going into it. And then you're yeah. eating something. Yeah. That, that not only is dead, yeah. but there's no vibration. But when you go yeah. to a, you know, somebody who's cooking a meal for you, yes. and they, yeah. they love what they do, exactly. that meal is, is not just in and of itself. There's yeah. some magic something, the vibrations, and that's totally. the same with water. Absolutely, absolutely. It's so important that you put good intention into everything you prepare. If it is food, if it is the water you're drinking, even just a cup of tea. And, uh, you know, that's where it comes from, cooked with love, you know, cooked so, love. and that's, that's so important. There we go. Well, we're cooked with love, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. Um, Dr. Alex Ling, thank you so much for uh, you telling so us much, about Richard. your work. Good luck with all the rest. Thank and, you. I'm uh, very envious about you being in Mexico at the, uh, <laughs> at the event on the 8th. That's going to yes. be fantastic. Okay. Are there going to be more of those events that we've got coming up that, we, that will affect us, do you think? Uh, yes, there are some. Uh, some alignments happening and uh, there's something to look out for. Uh, out for. So we, we always uh, will have some up updates on our website so just just keep checking it and and just before I go I know I was sort of almost wound it up but um, the future I don't want to say this because it's like an advert for a, a <laughs> defunct mobile company but the future is bright isn't it we we <laughs> yes. uh, there's so much of this knowledge and this new knowledge that's old yeah, knowledge exactly that's coming back yeah. Yeah. Um, it is you know this is what we're talking about is uh, the consciousness which connects us all and if we have good intention and we can then manifest a positive future, that is totally, totally possible. Brilliant. There we are. It's good to finish on a positive note. Thank you so much. Alex. Thank you it's so been much. Lovely to meet you. I will be back again with uh, more monologues and more wonderful guests, of course. But uh, in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Uh, it's been absolutely a joy. Uh, but from Alex and myself, till next time, goodbye. Thank you.